equal one dot a simple one 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 and I'm gonna do dy dx. Let me make sure we can see my dy dx. One, one, one. dy dx. Uh, hey um this is region B here, right? We'll eventually set this up. What am I going to substitute for the zeta? Because they said curl of F composed of the surface. So what do I substitute for Z? You got to go look back. There's so much writing on your paper right now and on my board. We parameterize the surface somewhere. You see it? That's what I'm putting for Z. So I'm going to squeeze right here. 3 minus X minus 1. Right in there. And we'll put a parentheses around We'll distribute it with the negative one. So now what do we have? Now we have that one to go up. Oh, and I can, I can enlarge this now. What's the equation of that line? So that I can reject this. I want to, I'm going to do this over that region there. It's got a little triangle there. Can you see that? Help me, what would be the equation of that line so I can set up this double integral? That's my projection. Is that 3 minus x? Y equals 3 minus x. Okay. To 0, and I'll go from 0 to 3. Nice. And all I did was just draw that region of integration right there. Cool. That was 3, and that's a 3. All right. So now, 0 to 3, 0 to 3 minus x. What's this distributed times a 1? I get negative 12 plus 4x plus 4y plus, then 1 times this is what? Negative 4x and 1 times this is negative 4y, dy dx. Now I hope stuff cleans up. Does it? Yeah. Because it's getting kind of long, and you're like, he's got a little space there. It's going to have to go over there. I think i got enough room here. What happens? Whoop, 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 whoop. Now I have just a double integral of what? I'll put the negative out in front. I'll put the negative 12 out in front. Do you all agree? Negative 12, 0 to 3. 0 to 3 minus x, 1 dy dx. Now you can work out that double integral. Anybody got a fast way? You forgot the 1. What's that? You forgot the 1. You put the 1 here? Yeah. You bet. I'm going to put it. <coughs> it's okay if I don't write it, but I, I actually agree with you. Put that 1 so people know there's a 1 there. That's what he's saying. Like I could have left it off because it's invisible, but it's not a bad idea to write that because what's double integral of a 1 font? Idiot. So can't we just do negative 12 times here, that triangle? Uh -huh. It's a base of 3 and a height of 3. So what's negative 12 on the area of that yellow triangle? So i got to be careful. Which triangle? There's triangles all over the place. <laughs> I'm talking about that triangle. That, that 3 by 3 triangle right there, not this face. Not that surface. That was the surface. So in this x plus y plus z equal 3 was, was this guy right here. He was that plane right there. I just want to point that out. So negative 12 times the area of that triangle, which equals negative 12 times the base is 3, mm -hmm. the height is 3, but it's half base height, right? Mm -hmm. Half base height. So what's 6 times 3 times 3? Negative 36. That's the final answer. And we can talk about what did we just find? Oh, 54. 54. Oh, you're the best. 54. You're the best. So you got 3 times 3, 9 times 12, 9 times 6 is? 54. 54. Everyone, thank you. Whoop. It didn't have much room, but we got it all in there, right? Because I'm going to leave this up the whole time. 
So understand, like, where are you going to do the left side or the right side? Hey, um, what did we just find? We just found, you remember line intervals find work done by a vector field to move a particle? So when we just found the work done by this vector field to move a particle, we can start here. From here to here, then up to here, and then down to here. All the way around the entire tire closed path. That's what we found. But we use this approach. We use Stokes' theorem to do it because it may seem like it started out like a lot, but once we found the curl, once we found this easy normal vector, this was not bad at all. It was way better than doing three separate line intervals. That might have taken like three times the amount of work that I have up here. So that's what we're saying. Does that make sense? Any questions on this? All right, and let's do another one. So this time, everyone, they're going to watch you use Stokes' theorem. Evaluate this. I can erase. I can erase. Yeah. You still can evaluate this where F is. F is 2z, 2y, 2y. And C. Boundary of the part of the parabola. Z equal to four minus x squared minus y squared in octave one, the first octave. Oriented counterclockwise as viewed from above. Okay. That means we've got positive orientation. That means we've got positive orientation. And I really think we should sketch that. Stokes theorem, we should make sketches. Because you want to see the surface. You want to see the curve. You should always look at that. Although the curve sometimes is three separate lines, like the last problem. I'll erase all this. Um, everyone, you agree the attack method is going to be the same. I'm going to attack it this way. How should I attack this problem? Like this. You go, why? Because they said use the theorem. If they said use the theorem to do this, they want you to do it this way. Could you do it this way? Of course you could. It just would take you long. It's just like doing a problem from section 16.2. You just got a few line angles. So can you help me draw this? C is the boundary of the part of the problem. Z equals 4 minus x squared minus y squared in octave 1. OK. Go like this. Go like this. On a paraboloid, didn't it just shift up four notches? And then the minus x squared minus y squared make it flip over? Mm -hmm. Good. That's what's happening here. Here's this windsock. Shipped up like that. It's coming down like this. It's an open circular paraboloid that hits the xy plane. But right here, they don't want the full circle. They only want the part of the circle, the quarter circle, that's in octave 1. It's only that part. Not the full, full what? All the way around, right? You have the full, full circle that hits the x y plane. So, do you notice something? If we did attack the problem this way, <coughs> can you tell you'd have three line integrals to hit? You do see that. That's good. Look, you would have to do, if you attack the problem this way, we're going to attack it this way, you'd have to do that line integral, parameterize that, curve, then you'd have to do that line integral, then you'd have to do that line angle. That's the boundary, boundary curve or path of the surface. Right? And when the surface is this part. That's the surface. The boundary is right here. That line, that line, and that curve. So when you read through Stokes theorem, they talk about a boundary curve C. A boundary curve C. 
This is the boundary curve C. It's going from here to here, along that line right there, and this way. So this is like doing a problem from section 16.2, a line integral, where it's like I started here, I had to move along that curve, the particle moves down that line and comes back that line. So if we attacked it this way, that would be three separate line integrals. We're going to use Stokes theorem and do this. So let's start with that surface. Can you help me parameterize that surface? Oh, I bet you do it easily. Can you parameterize that? Want to project down the x-y plane? All right, so let's talk about the surface. What's the surface? R of? x and y, what do you get? Let x equal x. Let y equals y and what's z? 4 minus x squared minus y squared. 4 minus x squared minus y squared. What's our x? The first derivative. The first partial derivative respect to x. 1, one 0, and negative two, 2x. X. What's our y? 0, 1, and negative 2y. And what's Rx cross Ry? And we're just going to make sure the normal vector is pointed upward. That means for positive orientation. What do you get? Write that out. This times this minus this times this. Do you get positive 2x for the first component? You check. You get positive or negative? Do you agree? I'm going to wipe this out right there. Are only a positive. Zero, subtract. Negative 2 times a 1. Yeah. Good. How about the middle component? What about the middle component? 1 times negative 1, because we've got to put the negative down. Negative 1 times negative 2y is 2y, subtract 0. And what do you get for this last component? 1 times 1 minus 0 times 0. Don't see how we're doing these cross products? Hey, is that upward? Check, look. We want. So if you go, oh, what, what if this was what? They said, we're in it clockwise. I would have just changed all these to negatives. That's all I would have done. It really just makes the final answer negative or opposite of what we had. I shouldn't say that the answer was going to be like a negative solution. It would just be negative, negative, negative. So we're going to keep that. All right, that goes here. But now we need the what? Oh, we need the curl. So I want surface is done, that's the normal vector, but now we need to curl about. So let's find a curl about. Let's see, i, j, k, d, d, x, a d, d, y, a d, d, z. What's the vector field? 2, z, 2, y, 2y. Can you get the curl of that? Curl of a vector field is a vector. Or curl of a vector field is a vector. Right? Alright, we get. What's this times this minus this times this? What's through that respect to y? Minus through that respect to z. 2 minus 0? Mm -hmm. My middle component, I'll get my minus ready. Wipe out the middle column. Through that respect to x, minus through that respect to z. Right? Negative, this times this minus this times this. Negative, this times this minus this times this. So negative, negative 2, which is what? Okay? I'll put my negative negative, but I'm going to erase the two negatives and make it a positive. Okay. And you've got to be careful. Sometimes just missing that right there can throw off the problem. I want to make sure that's going to be a positive too, right? Right? Oh, good. Now you're positive. Now, what's the third component? Through the respect to x minus, through the respect to y. Oh, zero. zero. Don't get zero? So I'm loving this problem even better now. Everyone, do you see any variables in there? It's because this vector field, you'll make this observation, this one wasn't as busy as the last one. You know, 2z, 2y, 2y. Look at our curl of the vector field. That's just going to make this map go a lot quicker. So this is way easier than doing three separate line integrals here. So I'm going to set this up. This is region D. 
Put the curl of f, 2, 2, 0. Dot product, normal vector, 2x, 2y, 1, and the end. Then we'll determine whether to go dy, dx, dx, dy, or go polar. Uh, what's the dot product? 4x plus 4y plus 0. All we gotta do is work out this double integral. Now look where it's projected. You wanna go polar? I know it's not a full circle, but it's a quarter of a circle. So <coughs> projection is a quarter of a circle. Let's go polar. Look at this. This is D right here. That's the region D. A projection onto the x-y plane. Let's go polar. Go polar. Alright. 0 to 2 pi, yes or no? I'm hearing no. That's theta equal to 0. What's theta equal to here? Pi over 2. Pi over 2. 1 half pi, yeah. It's just in the first octave. Uh, what's the radius? Oh, now I'm lost. Some of you probably just know. We've got to talk about that. I have to figure out that actual right there. This is one quarter of a circle. I can figure out that radius somehow. And this is all we got. So any ideas, suggestions on how to do this? That surface, let's figure out when that surface intersected the xy plane, right? Mm -hmm. We can start there. So 4 minus x squared minus y squared intersects the xy plane, and the xy plane, z equals what? Zero. So let's look at that carefully. We're going to figure out the radius of that circle. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write it down right now. Like, hmm, when does 0 equal 4 minus x squared minus y squared. I'm trying to figure out this radius of that circle, because that's where it's happening in the xy plane. And when I bring this to the side, and I think you're going to notice the radius of that circle. What's the radius? 